We're currently at B24, that's the cryoimaging uh, beamline for life sciences. And you can see behind the X-ray microscope, we also have more microscopes. We have a, a super resolution fluorescence microscope in the other room. We use a special kind of X-rays to investigate the ultrastructure of cells and look how things are organized inside them. At this beamline, we uh, service requirements from the life science community out of the 14,000 uh, more or less uh, ag academic groups that are interested in using the facilities. About 40% is life science and we tend to cater for this community. Uh, and we work with uh, individual groups, larger academic institutions, all the way to industrial clients. By and large, our users come from academia. There are different academic groups. And we have people that come here just as users. They bring their samples, collect data, but we have quite a lot of active collaborations. Um, we work constantly with users to improve the technology, but at the same time, we have our own projects and our own collaborations in specific biomedical uh, projects. And as also, the different team members have their own collaborations with different groups. So we try and very much stay in touch with what is happening currently. We study a whole host of subjects uh, from biomedical importance all the way to basic science. We look at infections, we can track pathogens inside cells. We're looking at carcinogenesis, neurodegenerative diseases, and we also look at uh, different organisms such as algae, uh, archaea, bacteria, and the like. To access the beamline and either of the microscopes or any of the facilities we have here, people go through a user proposal process. Uh, these are peer reviewed twice a year, so they're standard proposals. Um, and uh, quite a lot of these projects will get awarded time and our full support. Uh, it's a major commitment on our part to make sure that the project is seen through to completion and lead to a publication. At the same time, we have rapid access, so if it's a project in development and they're just trying to get just a little bit of data to see if this works for them, they can follow the rapid access process. For industries, it's a fairly similar uh, route, only they go through our industrial liaisons team, and normally they will approach them, and then we will get involved in describing access and uh, experiment design and dissemination of uh, information. Users that come to the beam line will enter an established workflow at a certain stage. Some groups don't have the facilities to prepare samples the way we need them for imaging, so we will actually help them. They will either come here and prepare their samples on site, or we will help them with protocols and expertise. Uh, other users will arrive with prepared samples, and then these get loaded either on the X-ray microscope or the fluorescence microscope, depending on the requirements of the project. We collect data on site. We do have now a fairly established remote uh, access uh, protocol. And then at the end, we actually are there to help people correlate, bring together the different data and actually make meaning out of it. B24 is fully equipped to prepare samples for our microscopy and our users will get usually in touch with us. Uh, we'll discuss their projects. Uh, occasionally, groups will have full capacity to prepare cryopreserved samples, which is fantastic. But should that may not be the case, then users can get in touch with us and gain access to our facilities. We have tissue culture and sample preparation uh, equipment, and as well as we can share protocols and give advice. Cry preservation is at the heart of our sample preparation scheme and for that we offer users access to both plunge freezing and high pressure freezing equipment. Cry preserved samples can be used as is or we can clip them and use the auto grip system and they become more robust. Then they have to be mapped using a conventional microscope coupled to a Lincoln cryo stage, any cryo stage in fact, and then they're ready to be used for the other microscopes. Cry preserved samples that have been mapped if they have fluorescence, we'll need a next step to actually get super resolution fluorescence out of them. For that, we use the cryosim. This is our structural illumination microscope. And it's also a D-store microscope. So depending on the mode that the user wants, we can adjust it. There, we will collect high resolution fluorescence information of the location of molecules of interest in three dimensions. Cryopreserved samples that have been mapped and then uh, collected data upon on the cryosim can be transferred to the X-ray microscope. This is a sample transfer chamber. Normally it's cooled with liquid nitrogen, now at room temperature, and effectively it allows us to move 
the grids that contain our samples into liquid nitrogen in a carousel that's specially designed for the X-ray microscope. We use soft X-rays for our samples and for that the microscope needs to be housed in a vacuum chamber. This is our microscope within its vacuum chamber. We can load four samples at a time and everything is kept cooled via conduction inside the microscope. Once the samples are inside, then a mechanical arm picks them up, puts them in the imaging position. All data collection is thereafter controlled through the PC. Raw data collected at either microscope at the beamline gets processed automatically. Beyond that, once the visit is finished, we are still here for users. Uh, if we need, if we can help with protocols, access to facility or uh, software instructions, we are always here. The data we generate here can be many, many, many gigabytes per day, per hour sometimes, depending on the project and how easily or amenable the samples are. Uh, all of this data is naturally stored here and we take responsibility for that, but we offer the next step to our users. We process this data and make it manageable and usable. This is part of an automated pipeline right now, but when manual reconstruction or processing is needed, we are here to help with protocols and expertise. So we take uh, a lot of care to make sure that what we deliver is usable data rather than just data.